It feels as if the sun is my home. Burning Man is a radically participatory phenomenon, culminating every year for one week in the Black Rock Desert. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the globe and all walks of life have made the trek to the playa over the event's 25-year history. They come to this isolated and hazardous environment with a profound enthusiasm for exploring and expressing themselves and for building and participating in the community known as Black Rock City. <laughs> Following the burn, they return to their homes transformed, rich with insight, learning, and relationships forged in the most dynamic, cacophonous, and cosmopolitan of cities. Two hours to the south, the metropolis of cities and towns, loosely known as Reno, is the closest civilization to Black Rock City. The two communities have a long and colorful history of finding common ground and evolving mutual support. The regional economy as a whole also serves as an indispensable source of resources for the event and for the massive migration of burners to and from the playa. With 20,000 burners among its 500,000 residents, the Reno area moreover has more burners per capita than any place on the planet, with each bringing more of Burning Man into their community every year. Event Horizon is an insight into the relationship between these two communities and what this may mean for other communities around the world. Well, you can look at it in a host of ways. The mission of Burning Man really is uh, to engage with others. It's the seething mass of humanity that comes together to create community <laughs> in its own very unique way. Very, very unique for each person. Each person, bring, whatever they bring to it, they will get out of it. Sometimes people bring um, a lot of baggage and sometimes they leave they leave the baggage there and sometimes they take it back home with them. <laughs> it's a wilderness camping trip. Burning Man's a culture um, and Burning Man's an event. And so the event is probably what most people are familiar with. Um, there are a group of people who go out in the middle of the Nevada desert and create a city where people are welcome to come and participate and um, share space for a week and contribute ideas and take that away into their lives as they go back for the rest of the year. Um, and that leads into the culture of Burning Man, which is the, the things that connect us all, um, especially those of us who have been to the Burning Man event, that m maybe make your life a little different after you've been. It's a um, international city. This is really fabulous that you can set up a community like this with streets, with a post office, with their community center, if you will. In the simplest terms, it's an experiment in temporary community. It's been going on for quite a while. The experiment continues. I view the event itself as basically an open box mentality. Um, it gives people the ability to 
kind of take their own initiative, motivate themselves to do whatever they see fit out in the desert. Um, hopefully bringing some of that back into whatever town they live in uh, for the rest of the time that they're inhabiting the planet. The biggest thing I notice when I go out there is self-initiated action. You know, people are able to take it upon themselves to do their little piece, you know, and um, it's conflicting. There's not one unified, look, we're all going to do this. It's like every cup of tea is out there. It's a, uh, the largest uh, interactive art uh, exhibition. Burning Man is a, a very amazing, eclectic art festival in the desert. It's just a really neat environment to just kind of really connect with, with people on a real core level, I guess, kind of on a real, yeah, core, basic, like basic needs level, you know, people really come together. It feels good. I think Burning Man is a celebration. It's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of what we believe and who we are and our innermost secrets and needs and, uh, and an expression of art as a celebration. It was like kind of Mad Maxi sort of like art festivals. More importantly, it's a, it's a community that extends well beyond the borders of Black Rock City, to which uh, many, many thousands of people belong. I think it has something for each person sees their own thing in it. Just like a lot of art, you've got to find your own piece within Burning Man. Uh, the part that I find in it is uh, the sense of community, I think is very nice. You get there and you meet new people that are next to you and everybody helps out each other. Uh, and that's the part that I like about it the most. It's a ritual uh, with, with great spiritual resonance for many. I've heard a lot about people coming to peace, finding themselves, getting to know other people, getting to a place where they can really learn mindfulness, really learn to live in the moment. And to me, that's very exciting. If, if you have a need to define it, maybe you shouldn't be there. Maybe that's the best way to define it. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, a, it's a place to express yourself without concern about what others think. It's a place where people can go to find uh, peace with their own ideas. Uh, they can find people with similar interests and aptitudes. And uh, you can find things out there that you never would have thought of <laughs> on your own or you, you never would have seen without an event like that. Adults playing so children want to grow up. And as a father, that means a lot to me that, uh, yeah, you know, it should be fun. We only have a little bit of time on this planet, and so why not just have a good time and be silly and have a good time? At Burning Man, when you say, you know, somebody should make this, you have to make it. Because it's, uh, uh, it's radical um, expression out there, and uh, you can't expect somebody else to manufacture your good time for you in this world where we're all consumers and we expect somebody to make what we want to buy so we can be happy with this thing. My crew and I, my, I'm honored to work with a 30-member crew on this uh, project, we just, our whole goal is how many belly laughs can we have making this thing? And so, hence, so many friends. And so that's what Burning as Man has uh, come around uh, to mean to me is just that I'm hanging out with friends and I'm building ridiculous stuff. And uh, pushing ridiculous as far as we can, we just want to wreck people's minds. Some people that are, you know, brought there and have no interest in going, they're just not going to have a good time. And if you bring somebody there that, who has no interest in going, you're not going to have a good time. It's an intriguing uh, a model of uh, what might and could be in the world. So I believe that what we offer, again, is a is a little insight into the creative, um, uh, the creative spark that is part of what we sometimes lack in our structured culture outside of Burning Man. I think the fact that we accept all kinds, that, that we encourage creativity, um, that, that people find, um, that they find a solace in that and they find a spiritual um, connection to that that will cause that to continue. It's a social experiment. It's all of these things. I see people coming to Burning Man and in one week 
they get more than you get in a four-year college degree in art. They get it. They, it's that kind of transformative change that you get 24-7 there for eight days that's better than any kind of college or art course or going to a seminar on art or creativity or spirituality or whatever it is you call it. We don't call it any of those things. We call it Burning Man. My favorite default Burning Man story is I actually was asked by a woman at work relatively recently, I heard they sacrifice cats out there. Serious, swear to God, like deadpan serious. And I was just like, where do I even start with that? I don't even know where to go. Where do I start with you? <laughs> Listen, we couldn't have done this in California, probably. They would have regulated us to death. I mean, I say that as a Californian. I won't be harsh on California. Uh, uh, but, but out here, there's, a, there's a, a sentiment that's very favorable to the robust exercise of liberty. I think, you know, Reno was a little slow to embrace it, I think, sort of um, culturally and also economically. I think although people think about this area as being kind of a place where anything goes, kind of like the whole state of Nevada, it actually is kind of a conservative population. And so I think, you know, there's always a little skepticism, you know, in the beginning. There was those years when the people were maybe a bit against the, the pub popular opinion, the public opinion was not in favor of Burning Man. And there was this bit of a negative uh, quality to it in, in people's perception. I think that has changed completely. I think people get it. People were a little bit scared of Burning Man in the early years and, and they didn't know what to think of it. And, and in many cases they just had a, a backwards idea about it. Fighting that initial reaction that the news media had to who, we, who they thought we were, which is different than who we are. That was probably the biggest challenge. It was kind of didn't understand them very much at, at the beginning, but I've always felt that it's really important as a commissioner to be involved with your constituents. And they're considered constituents. They have property out there and they have an event. Not my thing, but they have an event and it brings economic value to our community. So um, it started off a little rough. But having those meetings, I've built a relationship with these folks, with the Burning Man folks, that's awesome. They are people that truly, I believe, are really willing to work with us. I think it's been hard in a lot of cases because we don't always see eye to eye. They would like to have things done their way. And of course, we have rules and regulations as well. In the second month I was in office, uh, Burning Man started to be an issue with the County Commission and was going to be coming before us because of their staging area in the Hualapai Valley. And so I had my first meeting with a lot of folks dressed completely different than the norm um, in the audience talking about the staging area or uh, making their public comments here at our Board of County Commission meeting. But what I saw was a community of people that were here in the audience and then the other community that didn't want them to have permits. So you saw two factions. And so out of that, I, I, I felt like it was very important that Gerlach and uh, that whole community was in my district, that it was important for me to go out to the area and have a conversation with everybody. And pretty soon, the people that didn't like each other started sharing stories. It eventually got to the point where, wow, these people were actually talking to each other. We're going to um, bring you eggs. We're going to, you know, we're going to tell you uh, about what we're doing and when people are going to be there and why they're going to be there. And so it was a story that really came to fruition that here we have people that could actually communicate with one another. Um, it's been good. Are there things that we'd like to do? together and more, yes. There were challenges um, early on, and that was before really we had as much of a commitment into the community as we did, as we do now. Um, at the time, we, we, you know, we were new. We just had to create relationships. I mean, it really was about getting to know our county commissioners, um, getting to know city councilmen in Reno and Sparks, um, and, and even elected officials on, on a national level. 
um, in order to actually understand what the area wanted and what they needed and what, what it was to be a good citizen. Um, and those challenges taught us a lot about uh, how we could participate in Northern Nevada and actually be a member of the community and not just um, a festival that comes in. You know, things happened uh, early on. Uh, you know, we're a community and it's all based on mutual assistance and, 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 and uh, uh, certainly an intense kind of neighborliness. And, and uh, there were some ranchers out by a family that, uh, entire family, they lived there all their lives and, and their cow it, it, it fell in a, in a sinkhole and, and uh, we helped to pull it out. Well, that, oh, they said, well, maybe you're okay. <laughs> well, we got to be friends and we, we, we improved the road because we shared a road with them finally when we bought a little, little, a little land for a staging area and we paved it and then we named it after them. That's how you make friends. We, we were always responsive to the inconvenience and the problems that might create for people. And we were always responded to whatever was brought to us. And people learned to trust our word. And what we've done is simply is be true to our principles. We've stuck to a, a, a very, very narrow path of, of principled, self-disciplined behavior uh, on all levels. There's a lesson to be learned from the Burning Man events metamorphosis from deviance and, you know, sort of miscreants of society out in the desert, you know, having a party versus we've transferred this thing and we've taken responsibility for it and we've made it into this thing. We're hoping to uh, uh, be premature, but I think we have some plans that might bring life, uh, life back to Gerlach. And we've worked hard we, uh, to, to help to rezone it so that maybe it can assume a new identity. And, and it would be nice if the next generation stayed and their children could stay and live here. And uh, that doesn't look like it's happening now, but uh, there, there may be great opportunities at hand and we want to be part of that. This can be a lonely land, you know. Uh, there are signs that, uh, it's a message I wrote originally, and when you come in, drive in, and by the roadside, like Burma Shave signs, and it says, uh, welcome to the vacant heart of the Wild West. We're just trying to fill that heart with something. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and that, that vacancy, well, that represents all the freedom in the world. Well, Reno's always been a crossroads. I mean, that's kind of its historical identity. It was a crossroads on the California Trail. It was a, a crossroads on the Transcontinental Railroad, which is why it was founded in 1868. And it's always been a place that people have passed through, uh, sometimes to get somewhere else, um, sometimes to be here for a little while. It's been a tourist city for a long time. Uh, the divorce industry was really kind of the earliest industry that brought tourists here in the early 1900s and then gambling was legalized in 1931, and that really took off. Over the past couple decades, uh, Reno's really been on kind of a trajectory of change because starting in about the early 1980s, there was kind of an economic downturn that really influenced the way that the traditional gaming industry was operating in Reno. And some of the casinos started to close. It was really kind of overbuilt. The last couple decades have been kind of um, difficult, you know, for Reno to try to recover from. And so there's really uh, a great desire to try to bring people to Reno for different reasons than they might have come in the past. You got to keep in mind that there are only really two major population centers in the whole state of Nevada. So the Reno Sparks area is really the center for the whole, you know, northern Nevada region really. The population of Reno has, has really been growing. It's actually more than doubled since 1980. So there's been a lot of growth and there's been some troubles, you know, that have corresponded with that growth. But um, in general, there have been a lot of people coming over from uh, California. There's been a, a great sort of diversity to the population that's really happened in the last couple of decades. Um, so it's, it's grown, it's expanded, and it's really been changing a lot. I think one of the biggest challenges to Reno is its reputation. I think it's always been kind of perceived as a place that was a little out of the ordinary and where a lot of activities happen that you wouldn't necessarily want your families to be around. I mean, when it was known for divorce and known for gambling and, um, you know, even prostitution. And there's always been this um, desire on the part of city leaders in Reno to try to change the impression 
of the city as being a place that actually has an incredible quality of life for, for families to live. Um, but at the same time, you also want to make sure people realize that you're a unique destination. Yeah, it's funny. I remember coming to Reno uh, early on, and we didn't have a, uh, a really strong uh, reputation yet. Nobody knew us. Nor did Reno have a, a strong art counterculture. That, that didn't really exist yet. That was basically gaming, and, and that's, what, that's what Reno was based on. It was the gaming culture. Reno, like a lot of cities in this country, and Vegas too, is facing this, is, is, is the same thing is happening down there. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's trying to reinvent itself in this faltering economy, and, and, and so the city fathers are, you know, inviting the artists to come in and, and, and help revive things. The organization spends millions and millions of dollars in the area. Most of the supplies that we actually get to build the event um, are sourced out of Reno, Sparks, Fernley, um, Winnemucca. It's been really exciting actually to, to engage. I, I appreciate the business level of what Burning Man does and what outside businesses do, um, businesses and community businesses do. And it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun actually to find ways in which a, a burner that's passing through doesn't just get everything they need uh, in a big city like San Francisco or Seattle but, or, or even Salt Lake and just load it all up. But, but get on the road and head to where you need to be and then use Reno as your resource. The Reno community has really embraced and I love the, um, the recycling program that goes on, the Burners Without Borders fundraisers that have gone on here. Um, and that. Uh, that the, the stores kind of cater to burners on their way through, and um, which I think is great. That there's there's not a real animosity, or there's not a there's not a there's generally a positive attitude toward burners and toward the event. I think I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but <laughs> it's the economic ghost that nobody wants to acknowledge because it brings so much uh, money to the town. Because people passing through, they need to stock up on gear. I mean, if you're coming from Des Moines, Iowa, and you've driven all the way here to Reno, and it's only 100 miles to go to Burning Man, you're going to stop and shop. And you're going to shop like never before. Well, you know, in this economy, when you've got people coming from all over the world, and they're stocking up in a town like this, it's a huge economic impact. Um, I know August is our busiest month, hands down. I mean, it, it beats December. It just trumps December. It trumps Christmas, like, five times busier than, than December. When, when Burning Man hits, it's like a huge influx of money, and this community really thrives off of it. People staying here, hotels, casinos, everyone benefits, really. <laughs> Way before the community started welcoming them, we at the airport decided these were very important guests and we needed to do some very special celebration to welcome them. Well, in a typical year, we get on average 15,000 arriving and 15,000 departing, and so that's 30,000 people using our facilities. We have over 34 countries represented through the Burning Man experience through our airport, and that's incredible. When you think about Burning Man being not just a Nevada thing, not just a U.S. thing, Burning Man is an international phenomenon with all of these individuals coming in, and we're here to welcome them. When we realized that uh, the burners were so important to our community and, and, and the excitement and energy and representation from various countries that they brought, we decided that it was really important to develop a partnership with Burning Man. And that partnership includes the ability every year at this time to do, to do a display, an art display of experiences on Burning Man. It includes welcome tables, and uh, we actually have a, a welcome table that provides a lot of directions, response to questions. In the last couple years, we've tried very hard to make the community aware of how significant and important this entire effort was. Well, I think Burning Man has been around for a long time and it's, involved, it's evolved into a, a world-class uh, event and the tribe has a lot of experience with Burning Man. Right now, you know, the tribe has to work very closely with Burning Man and uh, a lot of it has to do with safe and uh, uh, 
health issues uh, when the event is being uh, put on because they travel through the reservation and they partner with our police department, with our, uh, our health center, and if there are any uh, uh, accidents, you know, usually the tribe's the first one to respond. second largest group of people who come here are from Nevada. And uh, because uh, Nevadans, it turns out, uh, kind of caught into the idea of radical self-expression. Well, the way things are going, I think it is conditioning the culture. Uh, when, you get, when you get all these people collaborating on a project like that temple, uh, uh, that, that just brings people together. And, and that generates community. There's aspects of community, there's aspects of generosity, there's aspects of sharing that have, had, have evolved out of the event that we feel are coming out into a civic environment and really uh, people are taking the things that they learn from the event and they're taking it home, they're making a difference, um, they're, they're changing the way that they exist in the world. They, they feel like they want to get involved in uh, volunteer activities. They want to somehow join with other people and, and do something better with the world. They come back from the event and they want to do more. And I think this sometimes going to the event gives them the push to actually think, I can do something different. I don't have to stay in the job that I don't like. I don't have to stay in a relationship. I can do, I can do more with life and actually contribute a tremendous amount to society itself and that's that's incredibly rewarding. I first heard about Burning Man through whispers in the community. I tend to associate a lot with doctors, lawyers, business owners. So we'd get together at parties, I'd hear these little whispers, psh, 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 burning, psh, 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 man, psh, psh, psh. What, what are they talking about? So I was really curious what all of these people who were elitists in the community were whispering about. And when I started, are you, are you talking about Burning Man? Eventually they'd say, oh yeah, we went last year. It was the greatest thing ever. Well, that's really interesting. So I became curious about it. And then when I started my PhD program and started getting information on society, systems, cultures, and communities, and that's the class I'm working on right now, that's what spurred me to try to find out more about Burning Man. I thought, what a better idea, what a better concept to, to study when you're studying systems, communities, cultures, and putting it all together, then Burning Man, where it, it's, there's nothing there, there's nothing, just dirt, the playa, and then it appears, and it's a full life of 50,000 people, and then it's gonna close up shop and leave no trace. It's an awesome experiment in community and civilization. I've seen the arts, the events, the compression, I've heard about the decompression, all these different events that happen in Reno, I think that really ties in and that led to my knowledge of the event and what it's truly about. Not just the rumors and the myths about Burning Man, because there's a lot of those out there, but the reality of what it's really about and how it offers everyone a different experience really is what drew me into the entire event. If people spend any time at all working on any element with the Burning Man event, whether they're working at the gate, they're doing perimeter, they're building infrastructure, they're selling coffee, they'll find some manner of reinterpreting that themselves once the event's over. And that will directly affect the community that they live in. Yeah. I can do that here and locally and feel inspired by everybody else that's doing the same. Even if at times you're like, oh, it's, it's you again, you know, there's there's a very good core group of people here, but the idea is that more people that maybe don't know about it or haven't quite been inspired by it yet, that might, you know, light bulb goes off, epiphany, whatever. And they're like, you know, I, I can do this thing that I've always wanted to do, and that might be my excuse to do it, and then realize that it's not just limited to, you know, one kind of silly week in the, in the desert. Now, once, oh, I don't know, I guess February hits, seems like every week or every other week there's some kind of fundraiser or Burning Man related event 
whether it's raising money for somebody's camp or art project or a gallery project or we want to do a bigger installation outside next to the artist loft kind of thing. It's picked up so much momentum that everybody now knows about it. Oh, it's been huge. It's taken counterculture stuff and brought it in, into mainstream. Um, this uh, event, which was, you know, really kind of looked down on when I first got involved in it, uh, has become mainstream and promoted by local government, uh, local business. It's a multi-million dollar event. And when you end up uh, creating the seventh largest city in Nevada for a temporary time and then bring it all back down, there's a lot that goes into that. A lot of thought, a lot of planning, a lot of expense, and it, it all happens at once. It's been a big impact. It's a huge economic impact, but I don't think it's acknowledged as much as it could be because um, very often it's embarrassing to politicians, leaders, but then a lot of them are secret burners. It's true, ask your doctor. But uh, radical self-expression is not, well, it's not very welcomed in the doctor's office, is it? I did have a bit of an epiphany where I looked at what was going on out there and I thought, well, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can really maybe think outside of the box a little bit in my, you know, in, in the default world when I go back to Reno. And a year later, we opened up the melting pot. When I called up Burning Man and said, hey, do you want us to sell tickets for you? It was never, wow, this could be really lucrative or this could really help our business. I, that, that train of thought was never even there. It was just, it was more of a, I really like Burning Man. What can I do to help? How can I volunteer my services? The Melting Pot is a ticket outlet for Burning Man, and I think we're going on our 14th year. I think Burning Man has allowed me to expand myself and push my own envelope in what I present through the melting pot and uh, and really kind of tried to go to an extreme. And we end up uh, kind of cross-pollinating into all different sorts of businesses and, and industries around town. There's burners everywhere and uh, there's a, an interesting almost a connection from one burner to the next. Uh, we even speak about it sometimes in, in the professional world. Oh, this person's a burner, that person's a burner. And uh, there's, all, there's almost an automatic understanding that this person's a burner. Oh, I can work with them because they're, they've had to go through all these different challenges to put on their event or attend their event. Once you, once you hear that somebody's a burner, especially if they're a multi-year burner, you, you know that, that you have somebody who's tolerant, who's creative, who's energetic, who's not afraid to work, because that's what it takes to be a multi-year burner. A lot of Reno people go to Burning Man, and so I think um, it's created community amongst us in a way. Like, we feel like we're together. And the connection between the arts and Burning Man is is really there. It's it's you can feel it. We always had a strong arts and culture community here, but I think as the population has grown significantly over the past couple of decades, you've really had a critical mass of people who are interested in growing those kinds of, of areas. I think Reno could in fact be the um, the example in many ways uh, of of how a a, a city of this size can embrace the principles of Burning Man and actually use them on a daily basis in, in their culture. I think that that's happening here. I think it's only just begun to happen. I have great dreams for what could uh, eventually happen in Reno. I think it's been huge. Um, not only just the, the economics of having all the people come through here, but uh, the burner community in Reno, but also um, just what we've done in art has been reflected from the burners who want to do the art. Uh, and has blossomed uh, since I got on the council in 1996. That's also the first year I went to Burning Man. So I brought back a lot of that stuff on the council and have been able to elevate the amount of money that Reno pays for art. And, and a lot of that has to do with what I've seen at Burning Man. We're such a burner town. 
Um, it's ingrained here in the culture here. We just take it for granted. Every single person in Reno knows about Burning Man and they know what it is, sort of. It's created this really cool like underground artistic niche where it's really like fed into and allowed other people to really expand in their own mediums, whether they're painters or sculptors or whatever. We have a really good art museum here, like high-end kind of situation over there. And they open it up to Burning Man. I'm curious if that's happened in a lot of cities. Um, maybe San Francisco would take something like that on in an art museum, upscale, you know, all that. Um, I don't know of many other cities that probably would. I could be wrong, but probably not. Black Rock Arts Foundation is our nonprofit uh, branch and where Burning Man funds art to go to the desert, Black Rock Arts Foundation funds art that that does not go to the desert. Before we even started uh, creating the nonprofit, one of the things that was heartbreaking to me was the fact that the artist would spend so much energy and time to create this piece of artwork and then it would usually go back into their studio and to storage or have to be torn apart or something. With the Black Rock Arts Foundation, this is a perfect vehicle for us to take that art that was funded by Burning Man, placed in the desert, and then actually put it in a location, a civic environment. One of the missions of BRAF is to continue the work of Burning Man the other 51 weeks of the year. Uh, Burning Man funds up to $500,000, actually this year over $500,000 worth of artist grants specifically for the event, for art that's created for the event. Um, the Black Rock Arts Foundation works the other 51 weeks of the year to actually bring that art to civic communities. Well, in the last four years, we've brought five sculptures from Burning Man to Reno. Uh, four have been temporary and one was permanent. Uh, many years ago, I don't think that ever could have happened, so we've actually formed a partnership and a collaboration with the City of Reno. We've received grants from the City of Reno for the last four years and have worked really, really closely with the Burner community to make these things happen. By bringing the art of Burning Man, especially something like the Spire of Fire, to downtown Reno and having people who have never been to the event be able to experience fire and art and also the energy that the community gets when they're looking at it. I mean, the first time this exploded, a thousand people jumped. And where in a civic community would you have that experience? You had that experience at Burning Man all the time. So one of the things that I really love about doing, bringing these sculptures down here is that um, people who would not ordinarily go to the event actually experience it. And those of us who've been to the event and are burners, we actually get to bring it to our home and we're proud of it. The, the biggest piece probably is the one outside the, uh, the Museum of Art. That was the, is a permanent collection here. That's very huge, Kate Raddenbush. We've done a lot of, uh, the city just recently, was it last year, bought a piece that's in the park, Whitaker Park, up on Ralston. Uh, we've had a lot of temporary art come through here. Uh, the, the plastic chapel was across the street. In fact, you would have seen it. Uh, I think it was 1998 was here as a temporary installation first, and Charlie Gattican did a piece over where the Mapes was a long time ago. So we've had a lot of temporary stuff. A lot of the people now that live in Reno actually work on Burning Man projects all year round. Last year I did a project for Art Town uh, called the Re-Piano Project where we placed pianos all around Reno and then I replicated that at Black Rock City. But in doing that I got 15 artists involved and we went to an old abandoned warehouse on 4th Street, uh, an old brewery, and talked to the owner and he let us in there and there's still people over there right now creating art. It was such a big place, some, some folks were in there uh, creating the art that they took out the playa. My vision would be to actually have 10 sculptures throughout Reno and to have a tour almost like a Venice Biennale, only it would be a Burning Man Biennale, where we would all start at the uh, Guardian of Eden at the Nevada Museum of Art and then you would get a brochure or something like that and you could travel and you could come down to this lot and have something here and have something, something somewhere else and literally have a walking tour and start really embracing that relationship between Reno and Burning Man. My husband, Will Rogers, is working on a program called Big Art for Small Towns, and it's another aspect in 
in Nevada of taking that art and putting it in the smaller town so that it can help them, help the tourists come by and actually maybe draw attention to it. We feel that if we can put up some Burning Man art in, uh, in the communities uh, such as Lovelock, Gerlach, uh, there's already a project here going on in Reno. Uh, we have about 10 different small towns that, that want to be part of big art for small towns. I see Reno as kind of the pilot program for smaller communities to actually start bringing the, the artwork of Burning Man that would otherwise be going into storage into their own communities and then creating um, interactive art and working with the community and working with the regional networks and all of that all over the U.S. and just kind of spreading the word of art, culture, interactive art, community, all those things that were really sadly lacking in civic communities. You'll notice that we have an art display in our connector concourse and I'm happy to tell you that this is the number one talked about art display in airports. Um, people come here, they look at it, they are amazed, they are enthralled, and they say, wow, I want to do this, I want to go here. Uh, Jeff Johnson is a neon artist, and uh, I should mention him because it was, it was his idea to do this thing. Um, he wanted to bring art shows to motel rooms. He wanted to kind of eschew the official organization, the official hierarchy, and uh, just do it ourselves. Bring art, put it in motel rooms, open the door, you know, and like, that's it, that's it. And uh, nobody's telling anybody else what kind of art is allowed. The whole idea behind Nada Dada is no idea. Artists can get a room and make a show, and there are no rules. And that kind of anarchistic um, approach to art gives birth to a lot of expression. We're all of us gathering together, we're kind of gathering the eagles, so to speak, artistically, that local artists in, in Reno and in our community are saying, you know what, we don't need the media, we don't need to promote this, we don't need, um, uh, we don't need endorsements from the power company, you know? Let's just do this. And uh, it's an alternative to the very structured show where uh, some, uh, you know, uh, some uh, political bodies are getting together and say, oh, let's bring in, um, let's bring in some New York ballet because we've got to get culture. Nada Dada um, is in its fifth year this year. Um, we're getting a bunch of international publicity, which I'm very proud of. Uh, six of us started it. Um, let's see. I, I know them all personally. I think almost every one of us had been to Burning Man before. It just gave us a lot of confidence to go ahead and do what we're doing because we've already seen it. We've already seen this work, you know. Um, we're going to bring it to the art world. We're always going to keep a, a, a non-central kind of organization, a fluid organization that's truly given away. So right there, um, the, the gifting culture that Burning Man provides that's been a huge influence on Nada Dada. I think that Burning Man's relationship with the Reno area is, uh, is, a, is a prime example of government working with art by just leaving it alone. It was inspired through Burning Man. It, it sort of has given me the opportunity to, um, to or, or given me the idea that I can do anything I want, anything I want, and I just have to just go out and do it and that's such a, I mean that sounds, sounds so, so like sort of a cliche thing but it's not something that people believe in themselves that you can just do anything. I, I want to do burlesque. Well there's no burlesque here in Reno. Well I'll just start a group. <laughs> just start one. <laughs> About seven weeks ago I said to all my friends, I sent out a little Facebook message to a bunch of my friends and said, I said hey I'm gonna get a stage and an audience and you guys can do anything you want. <laughs> Burning Man really gave me both the, the sort of energy to do that and the idea to do that, but also the connections that we have such a strong community here that um, uh, everybody knows everybody. The performances that I do are, I guess, Burning Man inspired, and um, I do perform out at Burning Man. 
there's a group in, in uh, Reno that's grown out of Burning Man called Controlled Burn. And uh, they are some of the most uh, uh, enthusiastic and exciting fire, fire performers I've ever seen. And they're sort of setting a standard for fire performers throughout the world in getting permits and doing things legally and making it right. And that's the way we, way we like to see it. Give it up for Controlled Burn! Black Rock Solar got started in 2007 um, during the event at Burning Man that was themed the Green Man and a group of volunteers and solar experts got together and installed a solar array right on the playa surface that helped power the man. And at the end of the event they thought it would be a great idea to donate that array and they installed those panels at the Gerlach School um, which is the community right next to the playa where Burning Man takes place and so they donated a 30 kilowatt array to the Girl X School and Black Rock Solar was born. <laughs> Our first uh, installation for a tribe uh, was here in Nixon for the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe and since then we've done eight installations for them. We've established a coalition of groups that are doing education in northern Nevada within the school system. We've all come together and joined forces and our group is called Green Nevada and last year we um, started participating in a competitive grant process through Pepsi Refresh and we won a $50,000 grant and we then um, had a sustainability competition amongst the high schools in Washoe County. We had nine schools participate and we gave away $28,000 to students to implement their plans to make their school campuses more sustainable. A couple of years ago we started to establish a relationship with the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe and they were very interested in bringing renewable energy to the tribe and so we installed the first array at their medical clinic. Um, that was a 30 kilowatt array and over the next two years um, we installed seven more arrays. We have established a very close relationship with each of the tribes that we've worked with and brought on apprentices who are tribal members to work with the Black Rock Stiller crew while they're doing installations. And um, this is a great example. We're here at Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe at their museum and visitor center. And one of our very first apprentices helped design this array. And he's one of our crew members now. And um, at the moment, we're doing two arrays uh, for the Washoe Tribe in Gardnerville. And we have um, a Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe member, three members of the Yarrington Paiute Tribe, and two members of the Washoe Tribe all working on those arrays together. It's a partnership. It's helped our, our community, our administration, you know, to, to make use of uh, alternative energy and uh, save on some of our budget uh, constraints. Uh, and from what I understand, you know, Pyramid, uh, well, here at Nixon, we probably, and, and the stretch from four, four, from the Lincoln Highway up to Gerlach has the most solar power in the country. We've, we're long-term members of the community at this point. I mean, we're not, we don't sort of come in and throw the, the event and then sort of disappear. Uh, we don't just sort of camp out temporarily. We, we have, we've made an effort to, um, to make ice donations at the end of the event. When there's needs in the community, we contribute. Uh, we, you know, we attend any committee or community meeting that we need to. Certainly, our intention has been to uh, create the energy that we create, and the efforts that we create uh, with the Burning Man philosophy around the world um, has certainly been very effective with Reno, uh, Northern Nevada, um, even you know, Gerlach and the Black Rock Desert. Um, I, I think people's lives have been changed by Burning Man being here. People have been, become more creative. There's more art in the front yards. And then even in cities like Reno, uh, where the Temple Project was happening, uh, being built, uh, it was really exciting for people. They sort of gathered around it. Uh, we haven't seen Reno as engaged as it could be uh, towards the event. And that was one of the first times uh, we really saw the potential for Reno to um, have its uh, community uh, 
motivated around something so significant. The feeling of what the temple has brought to Reno at the moment um, is pride. Uh, I think there's a lot of people here that have uh, always seen the temple, they've been part of the temple, but it's been from afar. And now they can get involved in the actual construction and supporting of the temple. It's hard to explain the impact because it's a quiet impact. It's not an announcement, it's not a declaration. This is a Burning Man event. This is a Burning Man piece of art. It just quietly happens. You see it everywhere, but you don't always really know that what you're looking at is Burning Man related. We're just getting started. We're something, this is a, this is something that's going to that's going to be a whole cultural shift, and it's just going to get bigger and better, and more and more and more, and um, be a part of it because this is something we're creating something really really cool, and I don't even know what it is yet, but I just feel like this there's this thing that's bubbling up that's about to get really 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 cool. <laughs> so yeah, we're just getting started. <laughs> There are some really most intelligent people I know are burners, and so somehow harnessing that and, and um, using that to their advantage to um, for to create new ideas, to create art, to enrich somehow enrich their community, um, enlisting the burner community to get something done. Um, I think that that's something that's happened here in Reno quite a bit. Um, so embracing burners is something that um, other communities can learn. I think that they should embrace the arts a lot more and not think of it as something that um, is just loony, that it is good for business, that arts can create community and it can create business. And people can profit off it financially and also uh, in their hearts. Tolerance. Tolerance and, and embrace the creativity that it takes to put on an event like that. Uh, the art that comes out of it, the technical know-how that comes out of it. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of benefit. The, the whole area has benefited tremendously from Burning Man. To be open to experimenting, to not be afraid to maybe have a piece of artwork uh, on a vacant lawn, a uh, lot somewhere, that nothing really bad's gonna happen. It's almost as if taking, taking the leap to experiment, um, not be afraid if something's climbed on, um, that it's okay that you can climb on something and it won't destroy it, um, but actually to take that energy out in the world and, and have a better, more positive uh, reaction to life. And I think that actually and, and, and to allow people just to go a little crazy, I think it's healthy. And I think when people are healthier, the whole world will be healthier. It's only beginning. And because our people come here, whether they're from Nevada or California or Singapore or wherever they're from, and they go back and they don't want to quit being the way they were here. And, and then they're surrounded by a community that will support them in this. And, 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 and then projects just get creative. And it doesn't have to be art, it can be almost anything. And, and, uh, and, and that's a new version of civics. You know, that's a new version of, 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 of what the human enterprise can do to create a home for all of us here on Earth. And, and uh, so uh, we're just, I'd like to say, we started on a beach and then we, we moved inland and we ended up here and we built a city and, and s sitting here right now on this playa in Nevada, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the beach and we're about to march inland again. And, but, but now we're looking at a much bigger world. So we can get you all in the picture basically and yeah, on this whole several front rows, if you could sit down, that'd be wonderful. It feels as if the sun is my home.
feels as if the sun is my home. The place I will return to. The place I will return to. I will return to Feels as if the sun is my home. 